The Sony Xperia 10 Mark II is the newest mid-range attempt from Sony. In this review I will take a look if they succeeded in providing a good alternative in this highly competitive market. So let's get started. Twenty one by nine is the aspect ratio that Sony introduced to last year's mid ranger devices and also continues this year with this form factor. This time, however, Sony opted for an OLED display that comes with the stretched full HD resolution at sixty hertz and offers brilliant colors, deep blacks, good contrast, and okayish brightness. By default the colors are a bit on the cold side, but you can luckily tweak it easily in the display settings. The display is protected by Gorilla Glass 6, so is the back. Instead of plastic, Sony added a glass back that looks shiny and premium, but also attracts fingerprints at least on the black model. You can also see a triple lens camera setup on the top left corner supported by a multicolor LED flash. For the camera I created an extra camera review you can find on my channel going into much more details about the setup. Later on I will also talk a little bit about the camera as well. The edges of the case are made of a matte rounded plastic that feels sturdy and would probably protect the screen and the back on a fall. The volume rocker on the right is made out of the same material and seems sturdy with a good clicking point and pronounced enough to feel it immediately when in your hands. The power button has the fingerprint reader combined, finally. This one comes also with a matte optical scanner that is able to quickly scan in fingerprints and unlock the device. The button is recessed a bit on the right side at the correct position for your right hand to land with your thumb upon when holding the device. On the top you can find a 3.5 mm headphone jack next to a noise suppressing microphone and on the bottom you can find a USB Type-C connection which allows you to plug in USB on the Go devices and the main microphone. You might be missing something. Right, the speaker. This one is located on the bottom front underneath the display which makes it a forward firing speaker. Later I will tell you how this one performs. On the left side you can find the clever SIM slot that does not need any SIM tool, SIM eject tool to be opened. This hides either two nano SIMs or one nano SIM and one micro SD card that can expand the 128 GB internal memory. In general the device feels sturdy and also high quality, but the extremely light body is a bit of unusual for a high quality device. A premium lightweight device that fits your hand pretty good and with its smallish size won't be a big problem when it comes to handling the phone. The screen feels fine with small bezels left and right, at least the same size you would get on any other mid-range device. Bottom and top bezels, however, are a bit bigger, which is not strange for at least Sony, as they refuse to jump on the bandwagon of notches or hole punches in the screen. Brightness-wise, the screen is a bit on the dimmer side, as it only can achieve about 380 nits, though Sony also provides an overdrive mode in automatic brightness mode, which can boost it to 520 nits, which is quite good for a mid-ranger and should allow you to see the display in the sunlight. As for colors, they are usually look like expected a bit of punchy, but not like overly colorful, calibrated like on a Samsung device. Instead, it tends to be a bit cooled down. In settings, you are able to set the colors to the original mode, which will turn down the vivid colors a bit and might be better if you want to calibrate your display. Apropos calibration, you have the option to tune the white balance of the device. Like I said before, by default it is set to a colder white and I prefer it to be a bit more warmer. The warm preset, however, 
was a bit too warm for me. So I edited it and set individual settings for red, green and blue. With this I can get a good white balance. In its standard mode colors it can also optimize the display for video usage and extend the contrast and color tones. This one becomes very obvious when watching YouTube videos or streaming Netflix. A dull image without video optimization becomes a very vivid and lively image. All in all, the display is really good. The customization helps you configuring the display accordingly to your liking, which is a good thing. For the mid-range, definitely one of the top displays you can get. Let's take a look at the forward firing speaker. This one can get pretty loud and clear as it is facing the user most of the time. Though the little speaker lacks a bit of bass and you have more fun listening to music or watching movies with the included headphones using the headphone jack. Here I have to say I'm really surprised by the good quality of the included Sony MH410C headphones. Granted they look cheap and the materials used here are really really cheap with thin little cables that tangles around and likes to tang entangle itself. But the quality is really really good. The built-in microphone also sounds pretty okay. This is now recording with the external microphone of the Sony Xperia 10 Mark II, the Sony MH410C. I always liked those cheap little Sony MH750 in-ear headphones, also cheap but very very good sound. The MH410C come pretty close in terms of sound quality. Granted the sound isolation is not as good and so the MH1 or the MH750 always produce a better sound than those, but in general really good headphones. Don't judge the book by its cover, it's probably the saying that fits those the most. When it comes to video playback, Sony's display optimizations help a lot to improve the colors of videos and playing back Netflix or Amazon Prime videos or simple YouTube videos. Together with the good sharpness of the panel, Sony really has created a good media consumption device, especially for videos. The triple camera setup is a solid setup offered from Sony. Sony does not deliver something mind-blowing with the camera system of the Xperia 10 Mark II. It is a solid update to the Xperia 10 and a minor update to the Xperia 10 Plus, where it basically just adds the super wide angle lens. The night mode is mostly a gimmick with limited improvements. You don't want to shoot pictures in the dark with this camera. You can still, but don't expect so stellar results. Where Sony's mid-range camera solution can maybe compete with Samsung and Co, the software is a big problem. Sony's auto mode is stagnating and has nothing to offer that improves the situation for point and shoot users. Granted, you get natural looking photos with good sharpness, but hiding HDR in the manual mode only is a mistake. Sony delivers a typical mid-range device camera performance, but where other mid-range competitors like Xiaomi, Huawei and even Samsung improve, Sony seems to stagnate. Sony could still update the camera software to improve usability, but I fear we won't see any updates in that department. However, Sony delivers pretty consistent quality for all three lenses, something other manufacturers leave out in this price range. They might add some more camera sensors, but those are not really usable as the quality differs too much from the others or fail to convince completely. In that regard, Sony's camera solution is good, but could be better, even for this price range. Let's take a look at the software. Sony cleaned up here even more than they did on the predecessor. You basically get a very clean Android 10 version with Google services. This is the perfect device for people who don't like pre-installed software other than Google Apps, Facebook and Netflix. This is basically what Sony provides here. Other than that, they also ship still their own music app, 
but the album and video app are gone and you only get Google Photos instead. Another addition from Sony is the SightSense app that occupies a small little right part of your screen near the power button and can be double tapped or swiped upon to be called. On double tap it opens a little menu that allows you to switch between apps, tap on some quick toggles or what I find very useful is go into one-handed mode. That's not always necessary, you get the notification bar also down with a swipe but you can also click on the notification button in the menu but some apps like to put into action elements on the top of the screen like Chrome for example and there it makes a lot of sense to have a one-handed mode. Swiping on the side sense opens up 21 by 9 multi-window feature which allows you to select one app to run on the top and run to run on the bottom of the screen. It also saves you your last configuration. In multi-window mode you can resize the apps and also replace the app running on the bottom if you want to or you can press the new switch button in between the two apps to open an app drawer for each part of the screen. Easy and good implementation. You just need to get used to call the 20x9 multi-window menu to see how powerful this can really get. As the system is so stripped down, even the older Snapdragon 665 performs pretty good on this device. Though you can feel sometimes that the processor is not enough when lots and lots of images need to be shown in a long list of entries and it has to load something in the background. Sometimes you also encounter reloading of application that cannot be stored in the 4GB of RAM of the device. Is that a major issue? No, not really, not for this mid-range device. It behaves well for what it is. Sony provides the necessary technology that you might have come accustomed to, like NFC support for payment, Whitevine Level 1 for Netflix and Co, Bluetooth via Aptex HD and LDAC support are offered by Sony as well as DSEE HX for upscaling compressed audio. That makes it a multimedia powerhouse, at least when it comes to audio and video playback. When it comes to games, it fails a bit, it falls a bit behind of what other mid-rangers can offer with a better processor like the 720G, for example. Nevertheless, games run smoothly, but not in the highest quality. They tend to run well in medium settings. It's clearly not a gamer's phone that need to have the best frame rates and graphics, but rather a phone for occasional gamers that can have fun also with 30 frames per second and non-high quality graphics. Sony usually provides regular security updates on the mid-range devices, which roll out every three months. Major updates to Android, however, are limited to one on the mid-ranges. That's unfortunate as other companies provide at least two major Android upgrades. So we don't know if that might change with the newer Sony devices like the Xperia 10 Mark II. The security patch level on my Xperia 10 Mark II currently is March 2020 for the time of recording this. I hope to get the June security patch beginning next month. Spoiler alert, the June patch is not ready yet by Google. So I think it will come out the end of the month and the beginning of the next month is what I expect to get the update. Acquiring GPS signal is pretty fast and the connection is usually very stable and I had no issues when it comes to navigating around. Sound quality and signal strength for calling is also fine, nothing to complain here. Let's take a look at the battery. That is quite a bit bigger than the predecessor with 3600mAh but still smaller than the competitors. Battery life, however, is fantastic. The combination of processor and OLED display leave you with fantastic battery life. Two days on average usage, no problem. One and a half day on heavy usage, also no problem. I got up to eight hours screen on time on average, but could easily stretch it out to nine or even 10 hours, depending on what I run on the smartphone. That's easily the category I got with the dozen times more expensive Huawei Mate XS with a lot larger battery I tested the last time. I'm impressed with the battery life, I have to say. The more I am disappointed by the power supply Sony delivers with the Xperia 10 Mark II. 7.5 watts charging is abysmal, even for this price point. Sony 
we should have put in a 18 watt PD power delivery charger because this is what the phone can really use. And I only use the 18 watt charger as this is in my opinion a safe and sane usage. If I pay for a phone that has quick charging, I want to use it. 30 minutes charging gives me 30% power with the PD charger. And this constant constant up until roughly around 90% where it gets a bit slower charging up to the last 10%. This is Sony's battery stamina charging technology that wants to preserve the battery by charging the last few percentages slower than usual. Taking a look at older Sony smartphones and my experience with those, I can agree. It helps to keep the battery stay healthier for a longer time. Let's come to the free software indicator, which rates from 0 to 10 how free a product is. 0 would be not at all, and 10 GNU Stormen approved. The Sony Xperia 10 Mark II gets exactly 7 out of 10 points. It offers source code for the Android, but additionally you have the option to unlock the bootloader to install your own operating system. Sony's open device program offers you a clean vanilla AOSP-like Android experience and is one of the best smartphone programs I encountered any manufacturer offering. With this, the Xperia 10 Mark II can be updated independently from Sony and their update policy. It allows you to install your own operating system and gives you the freedom to have almost full control over your device. The only thing keeping it from getting 10 out of 10 points would be the closed source firmware and drivers for the cameras, fingerprint and GPU. All in all, the Xperia 10 Mark II is an interesting mid-range contender from Sony. It is somehow a unique mid-range device as it does not come with the usual large display with a notch as a front camera with its still unusual 21 by 9 display aspect ratio and 6 inch size and notchless design it manages to provide something different than all the other brands in this price range. Glass back and front, however, is the same what others also ship. Though Sony adds an IP rating, which is a bit unique as well for this price point. The device is not totally compact, but would fit in your hands quite well. It's not a super multimedia powerhouse, I would say, but offers a great display with quite a weak speaker, but great sound output via headphones. Cameras are not the best for a mid-ranger, but the triple lens setup is flexible without too much compromises when it comes to the quality of each of the sensors. The performance of the device is not groundbreaking for a mid-range device, but okay. Battery life, however, is really, really great and shows what can be done when optimizing hardware and software even with a relatively small battery. This Sony mid-range device can definitely compete with others in this price range of 369 euros. I personally think it, this price might be slightly too high and 330 up to 350 euros would be more appropriate. But if you take a look at all the features it provides, there are only two things I would want Sony to improve upon and then that would be first the speaker I like to see a dual speaker stereo setup and slightly faster Snapdragon 730 processor for better performance, especially for games. Ach yeah, and Sony, please add auto HDR to your default camera app. That's it. Sony really pulled something off with the Xperia 10 Mark II and offers a very interesting alternative to all the other mid-ranger devices. What do you think about this device? Do you have any further questions? Want me to test something specific? Just add it in your comments. And thanks for watching. Until the next time. Bye.